Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today is day two of our Gaia sew along. Today we're going to be working with our uh, connector pieces and we're also going to be adding the pockets to the front and the back outer pieces. But let's start with uh, your, um, <clears throat> your connector. So you should have right now four connector uh, pieces cut out either by hand or with your cutting machine. You'll also need some uh, double sided tape. My favorite is by far the um, Geeky, uh, the Wizardry double sided tape, the permanent one for bag making. So we're going to use that and I'm going to be using I think a quarter of an inch right now for this and you want to take your um, connector and you want to place a strip of double sided tape in the center this is um, going to be holding your either D-ring or your custom pretty connectors and we are also going to edge coat edge paint this it's not a mandatory step obviously it's optional but since my glow in the dark has a white backing and I'm using black glow in the dark I do want to to paint it on the side so that's why I love that this step is included within day two so it gives you time by the time we get to day five when we'll actually be using this to dry and uh, use and sew past the drying point also for today um, extra extra homework that I'll give you if you do decide to edge paint this when you paint this today I suggest if you don't want to see the binding white edge this is, these are my two binding pieces. I also painted them um, both long sides, not the shorts, because the shorts will be enclosed. But the long side, I edge painted them. So I recommend you do this today, because again, this is something you'll be using on the last day, so it, it gives you time to dr uh, dry up, especially if you're using multiple layers of edge paint. So let's put the second one here. And I'm going to sew all around and I'm going to go wild and use gold thread like I said the other day. I'm using Tex 80 um, Wizardry Stitchery and Crafts string in gold because I think it will pop really nice. It will obviously also show all the mistakes that I'll be making since it's contrasting but hey, you can win them all, right? So let's go ahead and stitch this all around with either an eighth of an inch or uh, if you're able to do a sixteenth of an inch uh, allowance, awesome. If not, at least an eighth of an inch, but no more than that. So let's stitch all around. When you start stitching your um, connector, do not back stitch so you don't create the excess bulk in the top stitching. And I like to start about a quarter of an inch higher than the um, than that little curve here, you know. So I start about here. I put my needle down. I'm a top stitching length about 3.5, and then I'm going to pivot where that um, corner is. Go slow as slow as you can get it. I find it to be way harder to stitch slow than it is to stitch fast. Same like driving. When you get to the curve, go even slower. If you feel the need to hand crank it, do that. It's not a problem. just to get it as pretty as you can. It's worth going slow, especially if you're like me and you are using contrasting thread that will show any flaws. 
So it's a work between my presser foot, my hand cranking, and the um, knee lifter. Obviously you can sew this on a domestic sewing machine as well, but I will show you a close-up of how it looks when you actually take the time to do the curve slowly by, by hand, by hand, <laughs> meaning hand cranking the machine. Just where that big curve is, and I'll show you how it looks. It, it looks beautiful if you take the time to do so. And that's the beauty of the sew along, right? We're not sewing orders for customers, we're taking our time, we have five days to complete one bag, so it's worth taking the time to to hand crank this, because it's not a lot of it. Like I wouldn't make you sew a bag hand cranking the machine, but it's totally worth it, especially if, if you cannot easily control the speed of your machine. If you don't care about how it looks or you have matching thread and you don't want to waste your time like this, you can obviously sew easily around. But I want to show you how pretty it looks when you take the time to sew it like this. Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to try to finish this stitch, if I can get it exactly in the hole where I started it and again we're not back stitching we're lifting the needle and snipping the threads and let me show you how pretty it looks without even tying it let's see if it focuses if not okay. can you see how pretty it looks absolutely gorgeous and I have not even tied it yet but that's the effect of uh, hand cranking it see look at that top stitching that's how it looks when you hand crank it around the curve. Totally worth the extra time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the threads on the back. You can use a pin for that or you can use something pointy to just pull the threads from the front to the back, all of them. So you have four, at this point, four there. So now all four of them are on the back. You can see. Let me see which camera picks up this best. So all four of them on the back. So now I'm going to tie some knots and then because I'm using a poly thread that's also bonded I'm just going to quickly um, burn those so it's flushed together and this is one of the most perfect and I do tie three knots usually. Since it's bonded, it likes to unravel easily, so three knots will guarantee me that it will not unravel. And then I will show you close-ups. And repeat the same thing on the other one.
My air conditioning is blasting, so it wasn't <laughs> the flame wasn't staying on. Okay, we are done. So this is how it looks like finished. See how pretty. Everything is looking gorgeous, mighty gorgeous. That's from the front and this is from the back. So you can see it's flashed beautifully together. So we're going to repeat the same thing for the second one. And um, we're going to edge paint so we can give the uh, coat, the edge coat as much time as possible to, uh, to dry up. So what I like to do is grab a piece of paper. I have my roller I got on Amazon. This is from uh, Echo Flow Kova color. This is purple. I got this from Tandy Leather, but you can use any edge coat you want. Amazon has some. I know there's expensive ones out there, but I I, I don't have those. I think Nikki from Nikki Makes uses uh, the expensive something with G. But uh, for my bags that I'm going to use myself, um, I'm okay with just this. So what I do, I e gently put the roller around the edge. The more coats you do, the better. But if you're like me and you're not super stressed about this, I think two, three coats would be just enough. I just don't want the white to show, you know? So even one coat would be okay, because it just doesn't show the white anymore. See, this is white, this is purple. I would have loved the gold, but I don't have one. I got like five colors when I went last time to Tandy. And it's pink, blue, white, copper that I use on a bag, and it's really pretty. And purple, but next time I'm going to go grab some uh, gold too. It would have been nice with the, with the thread. So you go slow all around okay let it dry for about an hour and then you can do another coat, let it dry for about two hours, do another coat and so on until you're happy with, with how the color looks. This is a piece that we will be using on the last day. So you have plenty of time to let it dry out. I have not used any homemade edge coating because I really don't feel the need to. This bottle that's like two fluid ounces and for the amount of work that I do is plenty. Um, it was like $2.99 a Tandy. So for $2.99 to have two ounces, it's not worth my time to, to try DIYing edge coat <laughs> with acrylic paint and whatnot. I don't know how they would work, but I'd rather just buy it because it's easier. My time is valuable. <laughs> that's how I see things. I, I'm not going to waste it on creating my own when I can buy it for three bucks. Okay, so we're going to repeat the same thing on the other um, on the other uh, strap connector. Let it dry and then we're going to start working on your um, zippers that will go on the front and on the back. Okay, now that we have the connector uh, finalized, drying before the next layer, let's work on the zipper part. So for that, grab your two zippers that are eight inches long. So you have three zippers total, one that's 11 and two that are eight. 
Today we're working with the two eight long, inch long ones. I have my zipper pulls. Everything that I'm using, as always, is from Wizardry Stitchery and Crafts. I'm using this gorgeous train. How cute is it? It's a key with the train. Uh, for both of the, the pockets and the top one. We're not going to put on the um, zipper pull quite yet. Let's first attach the zipper to the lining. So you should have two lining pieces that are uh, rectangles, so long ones. And we're going to be doing uh, one and then you repeat the exact same thing for the second one. They're, they're created absolutely identical. So take your lining piece and stitch your zipper right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper. So both the zipper and the uh, lining are right side up. So let's stitch that along the edge. We're basically right now creating the uh, zipper pouch. Like I said yesterday, I'm using the new water resistant canvas from Backstitch Prints. It's really nice, so I didn't need to interface it. Now you're going to bring your other part of the lining up so it's exactly the same as the other side. Both right side up, like so, and we're going to stitch. Make sure that the raw edges are aligned. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end. repeat for the other uh, pocket. Mm. Then what you need to remember when you create this style pocket is that everything is right side up. This will make it easy to remember. I brought back my stitch length 2.5 from where I top stitch the connector. This is the daydream coil zipper. Um, tape from Wizardry Stitcher and Crafts. I'm not sure the official name for the blue, but it's not the mint. It's the brighter blue. So your two pouches are now created. Let's grab the zipper um, outer part, the one that we cut on our cutting machine. So one of these, you want to grab this one and you want to look for uh, your placement. Remember yesterday we marked the placement, make sure that you still see it. Before we stitch this down, I'm going to grab some uh, quarter inch double sided tape. I like to use quarter inch for this step, then I like to use eighth of an inch for when I put the actual zipper and um, half an inch for when we're going to make the straps, you'll see. One of my most used wizardry product is definitely the uh, double sided tape. 
Like I, I cannot imagine not having it when I sew. Okay, peel off the backing. It is so sticky, so I love it that when when I tack it down on the actual vinyl, it's not gonna budge. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now using the piece that you have, look at the marking and add your vinyl. following the marking. Making sure that it does not stretch, it's not curved. It goes from one end to the other. because it's very easy to put this wavy. Okay, beautiful. So this is what it looks like. But it's not going anywhere. It's like really stuck here. And now we're going to stitch around with a top stitch length. So Let's go back to 3.5 and stitch all around just like we did earlier. So at the curve part I'm going to hand crank it so it um, looks neat. And the same thing, we're not going top stitching, we're not going to back stitch, sorry. We're not going to back stitch, we're going to start with the needle down and continue on the straight edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance without back stitching. We're going to tie the knots on the back just like we did for the connector. And again, when I get to the curve part, I like to hand crank. So it looks nicer. You don't have to, only if you want to go the extra mile. This one, uh, this zipper uh, overlays would have been nice if I thought about uh, edge painting them too, but I didn't, so it is what it is. This time they will not be edge painted, maybe on my next one. Okay, when I go to the straight part, I'm not worried about hand cranking. show you all close up so you can see what a difference it makes. And then I'm going to try to stop with the needle in the first hole that I made, as best as I can get it. Same thing, we're going to pull the threads on the back. So all four threads will be on the back and then we're going to tie them up. I 
everything is pulled on the on the back. So now I'm going to tie a knot or three. Tight. So it doesn't unravel. Okay, cut. And we don't need to mess this one because it's inside. So I leave about a half an inch. Okay, so that's the back. Now, we're going to cut and you're going to be okay, I promise you. Take your seam ripper and put one long slit where this opening is, okay? Through the main part. If the, it's too thick for the seam ripper, then just put a hole then and grab your scissors and we're going to cut with some scissors. But you know, you need a hole to start. So first I'm going to cut the center. You're gonna be okay, I promise you. I know it's scary to cut through the hard work you've done. But just in, uh, in this uh, rectangle we're going to cut through the main part. Okay? So now on the back, I'm taking my scissors and separating the double-sided tape from the, um, the main. I'm going to unstick it a little bit and then cut all around this way. You can only see I'm about three eighths of an inch away from the edge, from the stitch that we just did. And I'll show you what I mean. So this is what I'm cutting. See, this here is about three eighths of an inch from the edge, from the stitch. So while I'm separating and cutting. You want to remove that part that has the vinyl and, <coughs> excuse me, and the fusible fleece, so extra bulk that we don't need there. Go slow, make sure you don't cut your zipper overlay. We don't touch the zipper overlay, only the, ins the main part. Okay? Take your time, no rush, that's why we have a saw along. It might be a little more difficult at the curve, but it's not impossible. I can promise you you're gonna you're gonna make it. When I finish cutting, I will show you how it looks like from the wrong side. Again, do not cut the overlay. Or the stitching, obviously, <laughs> that you just did. doesn't have to be pretty it's on the inside you can't see it so this is what it looks like from the wrong side this is the cut that I've made and this is the overlay so now the overlay doesn't have anything in here okay that's where the zipper goes see it's it's not pretty but it doesn't matter because we're going to have the pocket over it you just want to make sure that you'll be able to stitch only on the um, on the overlay, you don't want the excess bulk and the stitch on the main part. Especially since it's also interfaced with fleece, so it's rather bulky. Okay, so now that this is done, take your zipper pocket, the one that we worked on earlier, and a long 
the sides that have the stitching, place some double sided tape. I like to use for this step a quarter of an inch double sided tape and I put it on the edge. And I like to place it on both sides. Okay, this is Wizardry again, double sided tape, the permanent one. Okay. This is what it looks like with the double sided tape on both sides of the zipper tape. Okay, with your um, zipper up, you're going to peel off your double sided tape on the part that's on the bottom, so where the pouch is. We're going to peel that one off first, okay? Because we're first going to stitch that part of the pouch. Okay, so grab the overlay, the part that we just worked on, and place your bottom part, so the one that you just peeled off, on the bottom side of <coughs> the overlay like so. So you want the pouch to be up for now. Look on the front, make sure that uh, it is centered, the zipper tape is centered. We don't have the zipper pulled on quite yet and that's okay, it will make stitching a little easier. Okay, so I double checked that the zipper is centered. Now I have my pouch up and this is where the magnet will be later on. I'm going to go from the front and I'm going to stitch only on the bottom line. So, and same thing as before, I'm going to tie the knots at the, at the beginning and at the end of this stitch. So I'm not going to uh, back stitch. And I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Okay, pull your threads on the other side and tie a knot. So from the wrong side, pull your threads, tie a knot. You don't have to snip it close and burn it or anything like that because all of this will be on the inside, so you won't see it. Just cut it about half an inch uh, left of thread. Okay, same thing on the other side. Pull your thread. So you have both the bobbin and the top thread on the back. Okay, with the knot tied, now it's when you'll be adding your zipper pulls, okay? So, grab your zipper pull and add it to your zipper tape, simply by separating about an inch of the zipper tape. If you feel that you're not comfortable doing this step, once you've sewn in the first part, then not a problem. You can add your zipper pulls before. Just make sure that you move them away from your, um, from your needle and your presser feet when you stitch. Because I know this could be an awkward angle, especially if you're not used to uh, adding zipper pulls on already sewn tape.
and if you have long nails. <laughs> There you go. The zipper pull is added. And all the way here. Okay. Make sure everything is okay. So now, what you want to do is remove the backing of your other um, zipper, uh, your other DST, the top one. Because remember, we have the backing still on that one. You want to remove that one and you're going to press your zipper tape on the back of the uh, zipper overlay just like we did on the bottom but now we're only going to do it at the top okay you look on the back make sure everything is straight nothing has shifted when you are pressing it Double check on the front, same thing. Nothing has shifted. Okay, so now we're going to stitch it down. I'm going to pull your, pull your um, uh, bag, so the, the zipper bag, pull it down towards the bottom, the curved part. And we're going to stitch uh, like an U shape. So the three uh, lines that are not stitched yet. We have the bottom one already done. And now we're going to start with the needle down in the point where we stopped sewing the, uh, the bottom line, okay? And we're going to stitch up, then give up. Again, I'm not back stitching. I'm going to tie this off at the end. I'm going to pivot and I'm trying to pivot with the needle down just for perfection purposes <laughs> but it's obviously you don't have to do all of this you can relax so not stress so mm -hmm. okay move your zipper pull away mm. pivot with your needle down and then go and end the stitching in the first stitch that you made okay no back stitching we're going to pull the threads and we're going to uh, tie it off okay so this is what it looks like from the outside now let's pull the threads and we have only one step left for today after we pull the threads and tie them off and again you don't need to burn anything here these are all inside three knots about half an inch left so the last step for today excuse me, is to stitch the sides of your pocket, okay, because now we have a pocket that has open sides, so you want to have your front or back upside with the up, the right side up, you want to move it away, this the main part, and we're going to stitch just on the, um, on the zipper and the pocket. So we're not going to stitch on the main part. Okay? Mm. Back stitch at the beginning and at the end this time. Keep your main away. repeat on the other side again I'm moving the side I'm moving the main part and I'm going to stitch my pocket sides back stitching at, at the beginning and at the end okay. so your 
front is done. Gorgeous. This is what it looks like from the back. You're going to repeat. See, I have my uh, marking here and my um, magnetic snap deco wheel piece right here under. So you're going to repeat the exact same steps, exactly the same, on your back piece, the one that doesn't have the magnet. So this is your back piece, exactly the same steps, and that is it for today. So at the end, when you have two, a front and a back, both with zippers and the zipper pockets on them, that's when you'll be snapping a photo of your progress and posting it in the day two photo comments of the Sew Along album. You find the Sew Along album in the Backstitch Backroom on Facebook. I'll link everything as always in the description. And I'll see you back here tomorrow when we'll be sewing the uh, front pocket. And I believe we're gonna start doing some assembly on the, on the main. I, I have to check the schedule. But thank you so much for watching day two, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for day three. Bye, guys.